Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Mind Your Soul. And today's episode, we have Jihad with us, um, who is a success coach. And today's episode is called Unlocking Potential, how you can explore your potential with the Sahabi method that Jihad um, implements in her coaching. So welcome, Jihad, to the podcast. Thank you, Farah. It's an honor to be here. So thank you for having me. Of course. I, I had to have you on because you're doing something which is so different. So I think our listeners um, need to know what is the Sahabi method and how are you coaching them with that as a success coach? Thank you. Yes, I would be more than happy to talk about that today. I oh, say so you're yeah. me sorry, you want me so, to answer. Yeah, I wanted you to tell the listeners <laughs> what it is. But what, <laughs> what is this method, this happy method? What is a success coach? Because many listeners out there might not know that. So I think that's a good introduction. Um, yes, absolutely. What it is that you do, basically. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So just a little bit about me. I started off as a counsellor in 2008. I've been doing counselling for many years um, and then I became a coach. I've been coaching for a few years as well. Uh, but throughout, I felt like there was something missing that I really want to have. I didn't know what that was. Right. And it goes slightly back to when I was a child witnessing, you know, for example, you know, um, my mom talking to my sister and they had a conflict. And I remember looking at them and thinking they both are right, but they're just not understanding each other. So that has always been at the back of my mind. It has always been something that I found missing in what I'm offering. It's like, why are we different? Yes, counseling helps us to with coping mechanisms and so on, coaching about moving forward. But what makes us different, right? How can we communicate better and so on? So I came across a, a prophetic model or a, a, what some people call it, Sahaba model, where the Prophet wasallam recognized the differences between the Sahaba and not that he tried to change those differences. He acknowledged those differences and he nurtured them for the success of the individual and the success of the ummah. And there were plenty of examples, so many examples for that. Uh, but that's kind of a background of what I do is that I came across this model and that's how I became a success coach because it's all about being successful both in dunya and akhira by being successful as an individual and helping the ummah to become successful as well. And throughout, I'll be giving some examples, but I thought I'll just briefly introduce what I do. Yeah, that was really good. Um, interesting. So can you explain maybe further what the Muslim Sahaba method is? Um, yeah. And how it integrates with your work as a yes. um, yeah, success coach? Yes, absolutely. So some of the examples to start with where the, the Prophet ﷺ recognized the differences between the Sahaba. Um, I'll give quite a few examples, actually. Uh, Ibn Abbas, عنه, he was one of the Sahaba that were uh, serving the Prophet وسلم, from a very young age and the Prophet وسلم, was observing him and once he noticed his talents what his what his strengths are the hadith state which means he was impressed impressed means that was where the discovery is discovered the talent discovered that um, strength that Ibn Abbas had and he started the nurturing process in which he, subhanAllah, Ibn Abbas, you know, from a very, very young age, he became a consultant to, you know, Sahaba like Umar bin Khattab, Umar bin Khattab, the Khalif. He used to go to Ibn Abbas and consult him for complex matters because the Prophet noticed this from a very young age and nurtured in him. And that's a very important message sent out there that for us as parents, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a parent myself, but for parents, it's very important to recognize, observe your children from a very young age and understand the differences and nurture these differences as well some mistake we make you know uh, is that we we may say to the children for example your brother is like this why can't he be like this even as adults will make that oh, we say well. that subconsciously like your sister is doing that why can't you just yeah and that's like the worst thing you can say i know right that's like and a then, <laughs> yeah subhanallah you know for it's like it's, it's it's indirectly telling the child there was something wrong with you right yeah, subconsciously, this is exactly what we're saying. We're not stating those words, but this is yes. what the child is hearing. And this is also what we're kind of saying, right, with other words. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've noticed with my clients when I work with them and I highlight their strengths to them, they tell me things like, but I thought there was something wrong with me. See, yeah. so these words, hearing it as an I adult. All of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. So it was kind of like something that that kind of has been fed into them. And then now they're actually verbally saying it because now they actually believe there was something wrong with them. So subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ did not do this. What he did is that he noticed, he observed, noticed, discovered, and started nurturing. Other Sahabis, for example, when they became Muslim, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu, you know, in battle of, of Uhud, he wasn't a Muslim at the time. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the, the, the Sahaba, the Muslims in the army, stay in your positions, do not leave your positions no matter what. But then when they gained, you know, and they thought that they had, you know, they, they, that the war is, has ended, the battle has ended, and, you know, Khalas, they got the victory. Some of them left to their positions, so what Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu, he was in the, in, in the opposite army, he was with the non-Muslims, he noticed that. So what he did, because they were defeated and they were about to leave the Quraysh, turned around, came back and attacked the rest of the Muslims that were still in their positions. And that's how the Muslims were defeated. Prophet ﷺ noticed that in him. When Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu became a Muslim, did the Prophet punish him? No, the Prophet recognized that and I mean, he made him a commander of an army because he knew he has the strength of being, you know, being very spontaneous, noticing things, being very tactical, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these, are, these are some of the differences that the Prophet Sallallahu noticed and he nurtured in the Sahaba and he gave them positions that are suited for their personalities and he did not try to change them. There is a, a, a hadith that the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I'm going to read it out where he noticed the differences and he he um he appreciated those differences between the sahaba so he says something like the the the, the most merciful of my ummah towards my ummah is abu bakr radiallahu anh. the one who adheres most sternly to the religion of allah is umar the most sincere of them in shyness and mod and modesty is uthman and best judge is ali bin abi talib and the list goes on there are so many other you know differences so that you know clarifies to us the importance of recognizing our differences and utilizing them for our success and the success yeah. of the Allah. And that's how yeah, this so is how Instead of feeling like something is off with us because we're all unique beings and using that strength to actually tap into more of that potential to, to make a difference, right, in whatever we are doing. Absolutely. That was and very good examples and very empowering, I think, examples that you gave us. Yes, alhamdulillah. And that's when the people, you know, when 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 my clients hear these things and they recognize their strength, it gives them empowerment, right? Whereas if they continuously, like as children, as a, uh, for example, we use the example of children, if they're constantly hearing criticism, could you can imagine what would happen when they grow as adults? And that's why I get clients telling me there was something wrong with me, right? But subhanAllah, yeah. once they become aware of those strength that they have, yeah. and then when I tell them there's a have a match as well, this is like wow, I can actually be like that Sahaba. It's like, you know, our Sahaba are, are that is so cool. Right, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So alhamdulillah, it's, it's, it's really helping individuals to understand, to discover themselves, to have that self-awareness and for them to utilize our strength. Because if we're not aware of something that we have, we'll never utilize it. And Allah has given it to us for a reason. Allah has not given it to us for us to put it aside or to no. neglect it, but to utilize it. Exactly. And that's why it's very important to have that self-awareness and self-discovery of your talents of the strength that Allah has blessed you with. You don't have to go looking for it. You don't have to go no. seeking or trying right. to, you know. Yeah, you just right. have to tap, get them out there. Like I have a conscious pillar in my, uh, I think it's the same thing we we're talking about. Like people mm. don't know until they're like conscious about it and then they can actually work with it, grow with it, you know, do change it, whatever they want to do. Because we don't know until we are aware of it. Um, so would you say this method, um, how does it impact the brain, like the mental well-being when they get aware of um, yes. things like and how does that impact their confidence in, in the work that they're doing? Um, yeah, could you maybe elaborate on that? Absolutely. We kind of, you know, touch on that very briefly. So with the clients, for example, that I've, that I've had that, you know, when, when I tell them that this is your strength this is your personality and this is your sahaba match they were like but they look at themselves like but i thought that was a weakness about me or i thought there was something wrong with me right oh, that's interesting. That's yes. interesting. wow okay yes. and these are the exact words i've been hearing i thought there was something wrong with me i thought that was a weakness right and the reason mm -hmm. for that for example one of the clients that i've had She's got the uh, the personality of Khadija radiallahu anha, right? Very wow. inspirational, very motivational. <laughs> yes. Yes, subhanAllah. And when I pointed that out to her, when we had the session, I pointed that out to her, and she said, 
before I mentioned as Khadija radiallahu anha, when I mentioned being inspirational, motivational, and so on, she was like, I thought that was something that was a weakness about me. And the reason for that is because in her groups, for example, of friendships and so on, because she was like the one who's, you know, um, very inspirational, she takes the attention, she was viewed because of jealousy and certain things, she wasn't liked for that, right? Oh, wow. And therefore, these indirect messages that are coming to her that people don't like me for that thing, that I mean, this thing is a weakness. Mm, okay. Yeah, so, so I see that. that. Yeah, when I pointed this out to her, that she, she thought that there was actually, you know, for, for that it, in itself is a weakness to have that attention because she's very inspirational, and motivational. And, you know, motivational individuals, like when I listen to motivational speakers, we get really motivated. We get like really, a, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, we get really, uh, we listen to them attentively and so on. So for her to have that attention and taking that attention away from others, it's not, not intentionally, but because she has that personality. Um, mm -hmm. She started to see it as, as a weakness, subhanAllah. Um, yeah. But that's one of the success stories that we can talk about at the end, inshallah, and how that completely transformed her life, alhamdulillah, which, you know, is one of the wow. stories I share. Yeah, alhamdulillah. It has been, you know, amazing to see that. And you, to answer your question, that's the change it has in our brains. When we don't know or when we see something as a problem, we will never utilize it. Right? Very we true. We always see it negatively. The moment we become aware of it, the moment we discover it and we start to nurture it, it has a complete opposite effect in our brains that we start to utilize it. Firstly, we start we recognize it. We start to see it positively. We start to utilize it. And then it reflects on our behavior for our success. And inshallah, we use it for the success of the ummah as well. So it has a huge impact on how we view ourselves and how we start to behave. Yeah, because once we are aware, as you said again, we know it's not a weakness. It, I think it changes everything, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's been a problem, it's actually a strength. So it's like, okay, now we have to rewire all of those thinking because it's actually something positive. It's always been there with you, but you made it into a problem and you, yes. you suppressed it and then you were not living your true potential uh, yes. because of that reason. So yeah, I can see it. It changes like everything around yeah um, and, and and that that makes it very important to come back to the point that i mentioned earlier is that for the parents to notice that from a young age and the children because the children are like a sponge right they yes. take everything that's around them right and therefore they're going to take comments they're going to take everything even if you notice subhanallah when you're doing something and you, you're actually talking and you know you, your child or you know you if you have a niece or whatever you know around you they do even though they're playing they can hear everything you're saying right yeah and they're observing you they're observing your behavior and they're taking everything in even though they're not aware of it subconsciously so i know absolutely and that's yeah. why it's very very important to follow the method of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how he nurtured the Sahaba from a very young age. I mean, those Sahaba who became Muslims later, he nurtured that later on, which means that nurturing does not stop. But no. very importantly, that we started from a very young age, so that they have mm -hmm. the right foundation, so that they don't mm -hmm. encounter these problems later where they think there was something wrong with them, so that they utilize their strength from a young age, because having to make a mistake and then correct it, it's, it takes longer time. But then knowing it from the beginning and having the right foundation, setting that right is very important. And I see it as an amana upon us as Muslims. That's a trust because Allah has given us those strengths. Allah has not given it to, has not given it to us for no reason. Allah has given it to us for a reason for us to be successful in dunya and akhirah, right? And that's one of our responsibilities towards our children is that we make sure that we notice, we pay attention, we observe like how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did with the Sahaba. And then we start the nurturing process from a young age so that it's done right. So we create an ummah, inshallah, like the Sahaba. Inshallah. So you don't you don't work with kids, right? No. <laughs> well, it, this method actually applies from anyone from the age of six and above. Oh, okay. I tend to yeah, I tend to work more with teenagers and above. Uh, with children, I do need the presence of the parents with them because with the children sometimes that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah but it's, this method is applied for anyone because our brain is fully developed by the age of six, right? Under the age of six, sometimes. Not fully. But then, but then, like most, most, most until six. seven is actually under development, and then until teenagers, it's another development, and twenty-five is fully developed. 
So I just when it comes to personalities, by the age of six, everything oh, is done. Oh, okay, okay. But that's a different thing. Okay, I was when just talking about the brain. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, in fact, some of the personality traits were noticed from a younger age. I once once traveling with uh, with a friend and her daughter. Her daughter at the time was she, three years old, right? And subhanAllah, she, you can tell she's highly introverted, right? So when she's in the buggy, you know, the, the, the cover of the buggy was down and she's looking around and everything. Go to a stage, that's it, put it up. Don't talk to me. I'm in my own bubble now. I'm an introvert, mm -hmm. right? So subhanAllah, some of the traits you notice them from a very young age. Some of the That's traits you they, they fully notice them after the age of six, right? So it's very important that we start to notice these things from a young age because the way we treat an introvert will be different to the way we treat an extrovert if we have that as an example, right? Because an introvert... I'm like, I'm like introverted when they are outside, but at home they're very extroverted that's a really good point right and that's when I ask people like the questions of introverts and extroverts for example they're like you know I'm a bit of both I'm a bit of that I'm a bit of, because when I'm with strangers I'm more of an introvert but when I'm with my yeah. you know comfortable mode that I'm an extrovert yeah. that is a big sign of an introvert right that's 100% okay. an introvert right True. It's a big sign of, so my kids are introverted and I'm not I'm the opposite yes, yes. always been yeah but they yeah. are all introverted so, yes. Yeah. So the way for them, for example, for, for them, if you go out and take them somewhere, for example, you will get energized by being around people. With them, the energy is dropping and dropping and dropping and get to a level where that's it, mom, I need to go home. I can't take that anymore. Right. And it's very important to actually take them to their own space where they be yeah. charged. It's like having a phone, right? And and the battery the battery's dying. So if the battery's dead, yeah. it's not going to no, work. And that's the same with the intro. Yeah, even on extrovert, I'm, I'm a bit both, I think. No, I said I'm I'm both. I am extroverted, but also introverted. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm the opposite. Like, yeah, if it makes sense. I don't know if you can say that. But no. I, I get we'll overwhelmed as well and tired. Yeah. So we'll always get have a bit well. of this. That's what I was trying to say. I get tired as well, like being around. Yeah, yeah, getting tired is normal. We're human yeah. beings, right? Getting tired is normal. <laughs> but the difference here, the main difference here for us is, Extroverts, they get energized by being around people. Introverts, it's the true. energy drops by being around people. Right, That's mm. the main difference between the two, right? And um, there was something I was going to say earlier about uh, something that you said. Yeah, it's going out of my mind now. But that's the main difference. So that's what I'm saying is that when we treat introverts and treat extroverts, that's just an example, and there's so many other personality okay. traits, is that yeah. it depends on their personality. You know, the child who likes to be out and about and get energized by being around people will be completely different to the child who their energy just drains by being around people. So that's just one example that I've given, but there are so many other examples of the different personality traits and how we can accommodate for the needs of each personality. And how do you know about, like, what is there like a test or you do, you have some certain questions like to figure out what kind of unique personality they have? Like, yeah, this method, how does it work like in practical terms? Yeah, so it's actually very, very similar to the Myers-Briggs because people know it as the Myers-Briggs or the 16 personalities. But I always say be very, very careful on how you answer online questions because whatever way you answer them, the result will reflect that, right? Okay. And sometimes, sometimes the, example of, the examples I've given from, for, you know, for my clients, when we go through certain life experiences, it shapes us in a certain way that could be different to our own strengths, Right. And therefore, when we answer the questions based on experience rather than based on who we really are, the results will be impacted and give you different results to your own strength, your own unique talents and so on. Sometimes when people go through traumas, in traumas, we sometimes respond the opposite of our personalities. I'm going to give an example here. My friend, who I know her very well, right? And I told her what her personality is. She said to me that, um, she asked me a few days ago what my personality is. And I told her, she's like, okay, I just did it. And it showed exactly what you just told me. But when I did it 17 years ago, it showed something different. I said, to her, okay, send me the results. And subhanAllah, when I compared, sorry, not, not uh, in 2017 when she did it. When I compared the results, it's the total opposite to each other, total opposite personality. What? How is that possible? And that's why I said to you, because I know her as an extrovert, for example, I know her as being very, very structured personality, right? Because I know her very well. Her results showed that she was an introvert in 2017 and there was no structure in her life. And you can see the problem there, right? So I said to her, there was something that has gone on in your life that made you just shut down and there was no structure at all. And subhanAllah, her personality is the highest structured personality, right? Okay. And she started laughing. And she started laughing. She said, I went through a trauma at the time. 
So can you see how the trauma can make us respond complete opposite to our personality? And that's why I say be very careful when you answer online questions because you might be answering it based on your experience or your current situation rather than who you really are. And then the results will be impacted. So what I do with my with my one to one sessions or even my workshops is that I go through a set of questions and a set of scenarios to make sure that the person is answering them based on who they really are. And I tell them, if you ever stuck and you think, oh, it was like this and I'm like that now, go back to how you were as a teenager, because as a teenager, mm -hmm. You still, you know, your personality is still there. You still, you haven't, you, you didn't gain much experience for it to shape you differently. So, um, and, and it's very useful to have that with somebody doing it with you because if they have gone through traumas, for example, as teenagers or something, that would impact on the results as well. So that's why it's very important to have somebody going through it with you. Uh, and that's what I do. I go through a personality test with some questions, scenarios, and so on. And then after that, I would tell the individual what their strengths are based on their personality, what their challenges are based on their personality as well, right? So, for example, one of the personality uh, um, is that they, um, let me take one of the examples. Yes, the personality that is very direct, right? They have the strength of Ali, bin, you know, uh, along with other traits, say, for example, they have the personality of being very direct and being very, you know, they, they have very high intuition. It creates the personality of Ali bin Abi Talib, where the Prophet ﷺ encouraged him to be a judge, to get into law, being a judge and so on. This personality, they're very direct, they're very analytical, focused on problem solving right? Great personality, mashallah. The challenge could be that, and it, it is very likely, and unless they train themselves or they get trained on it, that they will say things as it is that can become offensive to others. They don't have, yeah. like, they think about rewording their, or, you know, paraphrasing yeah, yeah, their, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see that. They're so direct, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So then we work on that. We see how we can work on that so that it's not, it's, it's, it's we overcoming those challenges. So again, so the personality test. I can hear something ringing. <laughs> Say that again. I can hear something ringing. I don't know what that is. I can't hear it from my side. Can you still hear it? I can't hear it can. from my side. Oh, maybe it's on my side. Sorry. <laughs> I'm back. That's all right. Yeah, it was disturbing me. Okay. I hope the listeners did not listen to this, but um, yeah, we're back again. I can't leave anything, so I'm assuming it's not it's not recorded. Um, so yes, okay. so coming back. So I go through the personality test, the strength, the challenges we could be experiencing based on our personalities and how we can overcome those those challenges. And then I would tell you which of the Sahaba your personality aligns with. And then I also add on top of that is our ibadah our acts of worship because our acts of mm -hmm. worship differs it's based on our personalities and if we look at the hadith for example some of the sahaba they favor certain ibadah over others for example some of them they favor fasting and others they favor charity for example right so okay. the, the, the your ibadah will depend on your personality right and subhanallah when i do this with uh, with my clients they find this you know this part of it really really interesting because they find it like one of the clients she said to me that now she doesn't feel guilty anymore because her personality she can't sit down for a long period of time and make dua for a long time and she sometimes you know forces herself to do it and if she doesn't do it she feels guilty right so for her personality mm -hmm. it's not about sitting for a long period of time and making dua it's about making it shorter and more frequent throughout the day and she felt, it was, she's like, oh my God, I can do that very easily. And I would enjoy doing that, subhanAllah, because for her- That's personality. really good. Yes. It's like a relief, right? But it's not feeling guilty. Yeah. Feeling guilty is not a good feeling to have with you every day. And, and Islam as well. Sorry, yeah. carry on. No, I, I meant like, that's not, that's like a negative feeling, knocking on yes. the door every day and, and impacting your day, basically. So having that like, changing that around and it's like okay i'm not doing anything wrong i'm just doing it my way and it's correct you know i think that's like a big relief and, and changes everything right absolutely absolutely subhanallah absolutely yeah. so it's about and then when, when they have these tips they start to enjoy their way better and they look forward to it right For that's example, really good yeah, with my personality, there are some personalities that don't have a good memory. There's some personalities that have a good memory. So my personality growing up, my parents would make me, for example, do, or they would encourage us for, to learn, the, to memorize the Quran, right? And in fact, you know, I would go back to it and say it was actually forced upon us. And that's a big mistake, right? Because Islam shouldn't be forced, right? So, um, yeah, so I... You know, I would memorize, forget, memorize, forget. But then I've learned later on, based on my personality, it's more about understanding the meaning of the Quran, 
and connecting mm-hmm. to Allah through the meaning of the yeah. Quran, right? And subhanAllah, memorize was... it does not work for me. I have to understand what I'm, what yes. I'm memorizing. Yes, <laughs> there's yeah. some personalities who are great at memorizing. We have imams, mashallah, they, 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 they could be some of them having the personality of, you know, that they have a good memory. Like my mom, for example, it's, it's easier for her to memorize than me because she has the good memory, right? Those kind of individuals, when they go somewhere, for example, they pay attention to all the detail. They're very good with, um, with, with detail, right? And that's why they, they memor- their memory is stronger because they, they take... Visual. So for there's me, a difference between like, visual, yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's actually a difference between yeah. visual. My memory works, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and that's where when I do this personality test, and that's why when they when people do these personality tests online, it can impact on the results because they answer by being visual. Like I had a friend, and her results that's showed true. showed yeah no, showed that she pays attention to detail, and you know she's a certain personality. But when I'm watching, I said, to her, no, you're not that personality. But because she's very visual. She answered her question based on that. So the difference between being visual and being uh, and, and paying attention to detail. You could be a visual. For example, myself, I'm not a visual and I don't pay attention to detail. Both of them I don't have, right? But there are personalities who are visual, but they don't pay attention to detail. They like to understand meanings of things. And that's where the results could be impacted. But the personality I'm referring to that has a good memory, not only that they are visual, but when they go somewhere, for example, they remember all the detail and they don't just look at the big picture. Right, they pick everything around them. Whereas the other personality that doesn't pay attention to detail, they just look at the big picture. For instance, you know, once I was living in a different country and there was a mall, I would go to constantly. And I never noticed there was a shop that existed there, right? And I'm walking with my friend once, she was like, Oh, she was talking to me about that shop. I said, Oh, I never knew this shop even existed here, right? Because for me, I don't need it. I'm looking at the big picture. I didn't even notice it. But those who pay attention to detail, they'll notice everything. For example, they're in a restaurant, they'll notice even the frames on the wall, the, the paints, everything right so with that personality they have their good memory so with my personality i focus more on the meaning on the underlying so when people are talking i'm focusing more on the underlying meaning of what they are saying rather than the detail they are giving me i'm not interested in the detail so when they came to the quran and there was a course about surah al-fatiha and the meaning of surah al-fatiha i immediately connected because i felt like this is my personality and subhanallah it made a huge difference to my life and my ibadah and my connection to allah and that's why it's very important to know what ibadah works for your personality because you do it with joy and it really makes a difference to your life subhanallah so this is what i do at the end of my sessions as well i'm like wondering the whole time like which personality am i because i feel like i fit in all of them i feel like i have all traits of all of them it's interesting so, what we have, we have a bit of every one of them, but then one of them will be more mm-hmm. uh, The of Prophet وسلم, for when I studied this course, subhanAllah, I, 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 I was told that the Prophet وسلم, is the only one that had all the four personalities equally divided in him, subhanAllah. Whereas well, with us, we'll have, one, yeah, we'll have one more than the other. Yeah, that makes sense. It's interesting. I'm very curious. Yeah, it is a panel. It is very, very interesting, and it is good to be curious because then this is where you discover your ta- your, your your strengths and how you can utilize them for your success, like for you to enjoy even life, enjoy what you do. Right? Yeah. It's not just you know. So I've done several life. other tests, not the Sahabi. So this is one is missing on my list. But I've done several personality tests, like how I work, yeah, how my brain works. Like I've yeah. done loads, loads, and loads, and loads. And I'm creative and very visual, but I'm also mm. analytical and detail oriented. So this is where they all said, mm. um, and, I, mm. yeah, and I take risks. So when I see a vision for me, I just go all in and I just execute. Um, this so is my personality. Find out. Yeah, we need <laughs> to find out more and find out which of the Sahaba is your match. <laughs> it's interesting to know, because I've never tried that. So definitely yeah. curious about it. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, right. so you said you had a success story with your client that changed her life around with this method. Could you please share that for our listeners? Yes, absolutely. So she's the client that I mentioned earlier in this um, podcast where she, when we went through her personality, she thought there was that what she holds as a strength is actually a weakness, right? And uh, when it came to the Sahaba match, um, I said, okay, you know, what I usually do is that I tell people, have a guess before I actually tell them to make it a bit more interesting. What she said, yeah, she said, yeah, yeah. 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 So she said, uh, she said, I won't tell you. I'm going to write it in my hand and I want you to tell me and then I'll show you whether this is what I guessed or not. Mm-hmm. So I said to Khadija radiallahu anha, and she was in tears. And what, the first thing she told me, where is the Qibla? Right, where's the direction to prayer? And she went down to sujood to thank Allah subhanAllah. And it was very it was very emotional because until today, subhanAllah, I get emotional about it. We both were in tears. And then when she got up, yeah. 
she said to me, she, she, you know, she, she was in tears and then she started crying and she said to me that she just started practicing Islam like a few weeks before she comes to me. And she said oh. to me that, yeah, so she said to me that, I mean, she was Muslim, but she started practicing. Um, she yeah, said to yeah, me yeah. that she kept on having the name Khadija Radilana come into her mind continuously. She kept on turning it away because she thought that's from the shaitan. She was like, I can never be like Khadija. And that's one of the shaitan tricks. You can never mm. be like Sahaba. You can never be this and can never be that. So you think, actually, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm going to turn it away. That's a bad voice, right? And when mm. she learned that it's Khadija Radilana, she started embracing it, right? And then, subhanAllah, you know, after she left the session, she would message me from time to time. She'd tell me, you know, I bought the book about Khadija radiallahu anha. I found that Khadija radiallahu anha has three kids and I have three kids as well. I found this about Khadija radiallahu anha and I can be like, subhanAllah. And on top of that as well, because she's an events coordinator, she was well aware, well aware of what her personality is. And she started to become aware of what her team's personalities are so that she can utilize the strength in the right place. So she can allocate tasks based on personalities so subhanallah it's amazing to get feedback from people like that subhanallah another one Absolutely. i'm going to share actually because i found that quite interesting as well so that was in a workshop and one of the uh attendees her personality she's got the personality of Amr al-Khattab and you can see mashallah how strong and just you know very logical very firm right and she said that before she learns about the personalities um she just couldn't understand why her brother wouldn't get things when she sees it and she said that her relationship has improved a lot with her brother and her brother was telling her, what's wrong with you? What happened to you? How can you be so nice now? <laughs> oh, my God. Right, subhanAllah. So it's very important when you become aware of your personality. You see the impact it has on people. And yeah. then you start to understand other people's personalities that they're not aliens. Yeah. They're just different. And it's okay to be different. And it's okay to embrace those differences. Oh, and we're all different and unique. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So those are two success stories that Alhamdulillah. Very I'm good story. Very, very inspiring, I would say. Yeah. So you, you're making a, a lot of difference, like in, in like tapping into their uh, by doing by implementing this method into their potential, basically, and, and changing their lives around. Yeah. It's a very, very so, important because without self awareness, we won't know. Absolutely. So Jihad, where can people find you if they want to work with you? Yes, yeah, so um, mainly on Instagram. So I can be reached on Standout by Jihad, and Jihad is spelled it with a G, G E H A D. In my LinkedIn, it's my name, <clears throat> Jihad. Well, I say Jihad because I spell it with a G, right? I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. G E H A D, and then my surname is M U R S I. My website is standoutbyjihad.com. So these are the platforms where I mostly found, inshallah. And you also have your own show. I forgot to mention that in the beginning. Yes. You also like, yeah, please tell the listeners you also have a show they can tune into. Yes, absolutely. So the show is actually a result of my, what the work that I do. So uh, with the work that I do where I give the Sahaba as role models, with my show is called Arise to Success, where I bring in role models of today. Because the example that I've given earlier where people feel I can never be like the Sahaba, we mm. can actually. I want to show current role models of how they implemented or strive to be like the Sahaba, how they were successful. Like yourself, I have had you in my show, mashallah, how you've reached it's the success. <laughs> yeah. So it's how, how you've reached this and, and, and showing the journey, right? Because the journey is what leads to our success. And the journey could be full of challenges that the world doesn't oh, see. Yeah. When we see the success of social media, like, oh, yeah, we can be like them. I want to be like them, which is amazing. But then we try, we fail, we don't continue. And fail, I always say fail is not something to take us back. Fail is... F-A-I-L, first attempt in learning, right? That's our first attempt. Yeah. Try again and again and again. So I bring in those role models to show their stories of how they've achieved whatever they've achieved. Whatever story they want to share. Some of the, you know, um, guests that I've had, they want to share their story about making dua, the power of making dua, right? Yeah. So different yeah. stories that I share. So my my show, as I said, is called Arise to Success, where I highlight inspiring individuals and their journeys to success so that it can inspire others, inshallah. So that's on Inspire FM, if anybody would like to tune in. And that's on Mondays at 6 p.m. It's amazing, all the work that you're doing. So I had to have you on the podcast. Of course I did. Exactly. It's um, an honor for me. So to be like, I didn't know about this method until we spoke on, on Instagram and I went on your show. Like, I didn't know... So this is like a new thing for me as well. Uh, and I think many people will actually benefit from this, as you mm -hmm. said, tap into their own potential. And uh, yeah, I'm curious. So I, I must I must dig deeper with this. I, I feel yeah. like this is the mistake. I haven't tried yeah. it yet. So yeah. Yeah, well, free, feel free to do it. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking sure. about it for sure. So sure. thank you, Jihad, for coming on. And I will tag you and so people can find your Instagram on LinkedIn. And thank you for your time. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Thank you for having me, Farah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Now